Leonard Bernstein was at least as well known as a conductor in his lifetime as he was as a composer. And as a composer, he always acknowledged that he was fairly eclectic. In 1983, he said in a radio interview, I am beginning to think that I have only begun to compose my own music. At the beginning, there was more than a little of Copland, Stravinsky and Debussy that got into it. The better a conductor you become, the harder it is to be a composer. Set in this context, West Side Story is a fairly early work of Bernstein's and we can see within it many different influences. The 1950s were perhaps the heyday of the American musical. Guys and Dolls premiered in 1950 and the duo of Rodgers and Hammerstein were in full flow, creating works such as The King and I and South Pacific, while Lerner and Lowe created My Fair Lady. All these musicals had a similar musical style with an accompanying band of minimal strings, generally between four to eight players, four or five so-called reeds, being players who doubled on various orchestral woodwind instruments and saxophones, and a few brass together with a standard rhythm section. Bernstein, however, as an orchestral conductor, had a different vision. Five reeds playing between them 23 different instruments at various times of 12 different types. The brass called for two horns, three trumpets, and two trombones, timpani, four additional percussionists, piano, guitar, seven violins, four cellos, and bass. And this was not the only way in which he differentiated his musical styles within the work vacillate from the Broadway style of the time to avant-garde twelve-tone serialism with nods to the late romantic works of Richard Strauss, the vaudeville style of the 1920s variety show, and Central American dances such as the mambo and cha-cha. Structurally, it has many elements which are much closer to the opera buffa of Mozart than to the musical of the age. To unify these many styles and make them all appear to be part of the same work is no small feat, and Bernstein manages it by introducing something extra stylistic. In much the same way that the United States takes many different cultures and adds a particular philosophy of its own, creating a unique culture and people, so Bernstein takes all these different styles and adds a unique element of his own, layered over the top, which unifies them all. Broadly, this unique element is the semitonal clash, and it is featured in two ways in the score, a clash between the major and minor third, which also gives a feeling of a blues third. This is most often used to represent the immigrant Puerto Ricans, or sharks. Far more frequently employed throughout the score, however, is the tritone, which clashes with the dominant. Again, where this is used as a characterizing element or leitmotif, it tends to represent the white Anglo-Saxons, or jets. I'm going to focus on the tritone in this talk. As well as being the more prevalent of the two aforementioned elements in the musical, it is an interval which has been considered for much of the history of Western classical music to be out of bounds and was known as the Devil's Interval. It has a very distinctive sound and also a very clear implied motion, being just one semitone less than the perfect fifth, which is the most fundamental of musical intervals, it always yearns upwards and should generally resolve in that direction. For this reason, it can be a somewhat limiting element to the composer. When you outline this interval, the next note is pretty much dictated, but in the right hands, this makes it all the more recognizable with it being not only a distinctive interval, but also a distinctive motion. The fact that this interval is so distinctive and so infrequently used generally is why it can be employed so effectively as a unifying feature throughout this musical. In a musical exploring the underlying racial tension of gangs in New York, the inner conflict inherent in the tritone is a perfect vehicle. How then does Bernstein employ the tritone and incorporate it into the various numbers of the show? Rather than pick a few of the best examples, I'm going to briefly mention every single number in the musical to demonstrate just how rife the use of this distinctive element is. The show opens with a bluesy song in which we are introduced to the Jets with major and minor chords clashing against each other. The principal motif sounds like a major arpeggio or a fanfare, but the final note is a semitone too low, indicating from the outset that something is amiss. This is highlighted by the two words that first are sung to this interval, alone and disconnected. The fact that in both cases they are sung with a negative in front of them doesn't alter the unease that this engenders. Next, we have Tony on his own, singing Something's Coming, and after the first line, could be, is sung to a falling fourth, the next line, who knows, has a lower appoggiatura added, producing a further tritone. 
The main melody then plays with this nervous semitone, frequently rising to the tonic to repeatedly outline the tritone. The dance scene is next, and the musical style is very much influenced by the music of Puerto Rico and Cuba, into which the tritone is introduced as a somewhat unwelcome interloper. The famous mambo employs the tritone in two fashions. First, the bass line outlines the tritone frequently, and the aggressive mambo chords, when they appear, contain a tritone in every one between the flattened second and dominant of the chord, as well as the bass line having a tritone between the first half of the phrase and the second. The cha-cha which follows introduces us to the tritone as a motivic feature, as it will subsequently be employed in the Maria theme. Here it also appears in the bass line, producing a sense of unease in the otherwise calm texture. The paso doble which follows also has an uncharacteristic tritone in the bass line, and there are tritones of the turnaround at the end of the jump underscore. Next comes perhaps the most well-known number in the musical, Maria. This is perhaps the closest we get to a musical number in the show. Here Bernstein makes the tritone most explicit by using it as the main melodic feature. Not only is the main motif Maria a tritone, but at the end the final resolution of the piece in fact outlines a tritone, indicating that this is not a resolution at all. Tonight is again standard stage musical writing. Here we are introduced to Maria for the first time properly, and Bernstein wishes to portray her as free of the complications of the real world. He therefore avoids using the tritone. It first appears, therefore, in the bass line, as Tony sings a reply to Maria. She may not be tainted, but he definitely is. America, in musical style, has similarities to American orchestral music at the time, Copeland and the like. As with the previous number, this is entirely the musical property of the Puerto Rican women, and therefore there is virtually no reference to the tritone. Even here, however, there is one bar which hints at the conflict to come, which will infect even the innocence of these characters in time. Cool, by contrast, is all about the tritone, from the very first interval. The bass line alternates between tonic and augmented fourth more often than not, and the entire melody consists of tritones. The fugal section in the middle may be twelve tone in nature, the fugal subject is a twelve note row, employing each of the notes of the chromatic scale once only, but the accompaniment and the counter melody are all about the tritone. It of course ends, as it began, with a tritone outlined in the bass. The next scene in which Maria and Tony declare their love to each other in a mock wedding is, as one might expect, fairly devoid of the tritone. However, even here towards the end it seeps into the accompaniment and the final chord is tinged with rising tritones throughout. Musically, the next number, an ensemble, brings together many of the musical numbers we have already heard as a reprise, similar to a Mozart act finale. The brewing conflict between the two gangs is represented in the clashes between major and minor chords throughout, and the tritone makes little impression initially, appearing first in a few chords accompanying Riff, the leader of the Jets. As the tension increases, however, and more people begin to sing, the tritone makes a more frequent appearance in the accompaniment, with the triumphalism of the end marred by the tritone being outlined in the family. The rumble has jazz and symphonic influences throughout and is very different from much of the music around it. Initially, conflict is again created with clashing major and minor chords, but as melody takes over, the tritone comes to the fore. The dramatic chords illustrating knife stabs all contain a tritone. Here again, the tritone is the dominant force. The act ends with a rapidly rising idea as Tony runs away, with tritone after tritone being outlined, leaving us with that interval alone singing in our ears as we are released for a few minutes from the unbearable tension to the foyer of the theatre. Act two begins with a traditional song without any conflict as Maria proclaims innocently, I feel pretty. The accompaniment to the interjections from her friends demonstrate some tritones, but these are somewhat underplayed. The ballet sequence is romantic in nature with a tonal language to match, but still the tritone pervades all within the accompaniment and also the vocal lines. This leads to Somewhere, whose melody is remarkably similar to the second movement of Beethoven's fifth piano concerto. The music seems simple enough, but even here there are hints of the inner tension as the final cadence, proclaiming their mutual hope for a better life, concludes with a tritone in the melody. 
Officer Krupke is a slapstick vaudeville number with music to match, but from the outset the song shows its colours again, as with so many of these pieces, the very first interval is a tritone, and the tritone makes many more appearances throughout the work, not least in between each verse, when the rise up a semitone tonality between verses creates a tritone between the previous dominant and the new tonic. A Boy Like That, which follows, is a vehicle for Anita, who is the girlfriend of the Puerto Rican gang leader, who happens also to be Maria's brother. He has been killed by Maria's boyfriend, Tony, and Anita angrily tries to persuade Maria that he, the boyfriend, is worthless. As a Puerto Rican woman, Anita's song focuses more on the major and minor clashes than the tritone, but even here, the very first bar outlines a tritone, and Maria's retort at its climax reveals where her true feelings lie. As she sings at the top of her range, Oh no, Anita, no, the interval outlined is that of a tritone, from F flat to B flat. She continues with more tritones emerging between her line and the bass line. And as she and Anita are reconciled and agree that Tony is worth it, the tritone becomes a significantly stronger element as they effectively both appear to pledge themselves to Tony's cause. The taunting scene leading up to Tony being shot is underscoring and therefore avoids the tritone as being too distinctive, using the mambo instead. But towards the end, the tritone again asserts itself, with the chords outlining the tritone starkly. As Tony dies in Maria's arms, they sing the end of Somehow, with again the tritone being outlined in the outer notes of the phrase. The final three bars of the musical are an almost direct quote from the end of Also Sprach Zarathustra by Strauss, which ends with the struggle between man and nature unresolved, a high B major chord alternating with a plucked bottom C from the strings. Here, rather, Bernstein takes a high C major chord and contrasts it not with a B in the bass, but of course, the tritone F sharp, similarly indicating that the conflict is unresolved. There are many composers, most indeed, who have a distinctive compositional style, and Bernstein was not, at this stage in his composing life at least, one of those. However, he managed to create in West Side Story a musical with a distinctive and unique feel throughout, despite the disparate nature of the styles with which he was working. Hopefully, you've been able to see how he manages this through the almost pervasive use of one interval throughout. This gives the entire work a unity and a distinctive flavour which is all its own. For the composers amongst you, the important takeaway here is that this is not something which happens by accident. It is clear that Bernstein had this as a unifying feature in mind from the outset of the composition. It was planned and baked in from the beginning into all of the important motifs, harmonies and modulations. More than anything else, it is this care and attention to the overall language of West Side Story which makes it, in my opinion, a great stage work. Possibly the greatest of all musicals.